Let's go to the Lord in prayer together, please. Most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this day that we celebrate as being Christmas Day, day that the Lord was born, brought here, Lord, as a miracle on earth for each and every one of us to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We ask today that you touch our hearts, wax our eyes wise with your wisdom, Lord, as we deal with the issues of life. Touch our hearts today. Let the Spirit of God walk through this congregation and touch each and every one of us that we may pay close attention to the words that are spoken. I pray, Lord, that the things that I say will be easy for all to understand. We thank you for the miracles that has occurred at Merritt Park Baptist Church. And we thank you, Lord, that you will continue to bless us as we continue to serve you. For we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those who are unable to give, 
where we do pray this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated, ladies and gentlemen. In our minds, the manger has become forever identified with Emmanuel's coming. It's almost as if the spotlight of history shines on it, so we can't ignore it or forget that at the very heart of Christmas, there is only this. Jesus, God's only begotten Son, was born for our salvation. Jesus at the center of it all. Sometimes when we look at this free gift that God gives to us, we have to understand that it is a gift by choice. You can accept it or you can reject it. A lot of you have already opened Christmas gifts. <coughs> I got a bow tie this year. I was so happy that I got it. I first thought, isn't this going to be something? Me wearing a bow tie. And I would have worn it, except you have to tie it yourself. <laughs> it looked kind of like a shoelace when I was done with it. <laughs> I put a note inside the box, do not open until next Christmas. <laughs> We're not all going to get what we want for Christmas, but we do know this. There is a gift that you can take home, each and every one of you today. If you dig deep down into your inner part, your soul, this will be a gift that will help you to get through not only this event, but the entire year of 2017. Sometimes when you tell people that God's going to give you a free gift, the only free things that we know 
and I've seen you there standing in those lines at Costco's or those free samples they give out every day. In fact, I found out that's the cheapest way to eat lunch if you're on a dollar. <laughs> this gift that God gives to you, either you re accept it or you reject it. And one of the things that you need to know about this gift is God's not going to push Christ on you. So let's get that understanding out of the way. He's not going to make you accept him. Now, he'll open your eyes on some things, get you really thinking about your personal relationship with God. So some of you have accepted Christ and you have stayed with Christ and your life has been changed. Others have accepted Christ, but yet they have laid that gift aside when they went out into the world. And then there are others who have never accepted Christ. This message is for each and every one of you. Remember I've been sharing with you about the three circles, the circle that dealt with everybody that was unsaved, the one in the middle about the saved people, and the one on the right-hand side about the saved people, but not in tune with God? This message is for every person that's in this church today. You will be able to take something home today from this message. I guarantee this. Last week I said to you, I think somewhere along the sermon, that if we had a deaf child, we would not hesitate to learn sign language to reach that child, to communicate to that child. And we would do that because we have a love in our heart for our children. You are God's children. You have heard, but you did not listen, some of you. Some of you listened, but did not hear what was said throughout the year. So today, I thought the best thing for me to do is to try to reach out with you to get you to understand, first off, the season, the Christmas season. It is a time where we come in and most of us are totally exhausted because of the things that we were doing for other people, some who appreciated it and some who didn't appreciate it. And you'll learn that as the day goes on when your family gets there and, and, and they begin to exchange gifts and some will murmur and complain. Whatever the case may be, soon this day will be over. But for the Christian, every day is Christmas Day. For the Christian, every day is Easter. For the Christian, they're walking in the light of the Lord. They may slip and fall, but God is always ready to pull them back. So you may be sitting here today saying to yourself, I'm a Christian, but I'm not where I should be. Oh, this message will definitely touch your hearts. But for the Christians that are here, who think they've got it all together, you may rethink that as I go on with this sermon today. Because the Christmas story is different this year. <clears throat> All of you have gotten a list and made one for your family and friends of things that you wanted for Christmas. Most of the kids have done that. Adults sometimes do that too. On my list was not a bow tie, especially one that I had to tie myself. But anyhow, I, I handled that. I always think that people sometimes give you a gift that just irritates you to see how you're going to respond to it. I can't even rebox it. I can't give it to one of the deacons. I can't give anybody to church because nobody here wears a bow tie. And if you did, you'd have to know how to tie it. Christmas can be filled with a lot of pain, a lot of sad memories. This past week, I, I called eight families. Actually, I called them all yesterday, Christmas Eve. And they were eight families that have lost children or husbands or wives this past year. And I wanted to let them know that our church was still praying for them because I know that sometimes the families are forgotten. And, and that's why we have this tree of remembrance on the side over here. And, and each person that I spoke to said to me, thank you so much for calling. I'm glad that you remembered me. Some I know will not be here today because they have family coming in and they're doing other things. So I took care of that task, but yet I was still trying to get everything together and tried to figure out how I was going to reach you with God's word. And then I thought to myself for just a moment, some of you will leave today and you will go to your homes and you will meet with family members and there will not be one thing go on with your day. There will be other people that will leave here today and this is what their Christmas wish would be. I wish when I get home, I would see my mom and dad standing at the door or my son or daughter standing at the door, knowing that it would be impossible because these loved ones have already passed. 